Hello, folks. Hello, everyone. If you're here, say hello. Kenneth, what's up? Alfonso, big up. Mario, what's going on? So if, if everybody, anybody that's here that's logged on, just uh, give us a hello. Mr. McCook, what's going on, boss? Respect. BJ, Miguel, welcome. Howard, what's going on? Mr. Wilson, Dane, bless up. Garth, Anthony, Chili Rose, what's going on? You there? Bless up and big respect. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're excited. I just want to just, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but listen, just be quiet, everybody, and listen for a second. You guys hear that? You guys hear the Pini Wally and them things? We're actually doing this on the farm for the first time in that four months. Yeah. yeah, we actually got internet this week. So you guys can actually hear like we're on the farm, back on the farm, the original I go spot. Um so I'm excited to know that we can be back at full, full functionality here on the farm. Uh, do me a favor and share this, uh, share the link or invite people to join us. I'm going to do something tonight that um, I've been debating for a while whether I should do it because to be honest with you, with you guys, as we always do. Some of these topics that we get into, people don't find them sexy. And I don't know if it bores people or whatever, but um, my philosophy is we need to bring value to people in this. So tonight I'm going to dig into how to establish your farm brand. That we've talked about starting a farm and what you need to do to start a farm and all that stuff. But tonight we're going to talk about, okay, once you start the farm, how do you establish the brand? How do you get people to know that you exist and what you do, right? And I'm going to break it down. The truth of the matter is I'm taking all of this from the other side of what I do. Well, who don't know it's from the entertainment side. And I'm going to, I outlined, basically it's flipping what we do on the entertainment side and applying it to a farm operation. The principles are the same. However, you know, some of the steps may be, some of the things you do are obviously different, but the principles and uh, how you go about it is the same. So, um, if you guys, you know, want to share and invite some people who may want to know how to do this, and when I say, when I say um, branding or establish your brand, I'm talking about if you see the Coca-Cola logo, you know what it's about. You see Hyper logo, you know what it's about. You see Nutramix logo, you, you know what it's about. You see NCB logo, you know what it's about. You don't even have to see the word bank. You don't see NCB and you think. Two things you think. If you're dyslexic like me or sometimes get a mix up, you think N you see NBC or, or you definitely know it's, it's NCB. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I write, in order, instead of writing NCB, I write NBC. But it's because of branding, right? So... That's what branding is. That's what establishing your brand means. When people see it, see the name, see the logo, they know what it's about. They know exactly what to expect. 
you know, what product is associated with that brand. You know, the Louis Vuittons, the all the different established brands, Apple, you know what's associated with Apple. Amazon, you know what's associated with it. So that's what I'm talking about when I said establish your brand and different ways of doing it. All right, so let's dig into it so people have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Um, so basically what we call to establish it, the process, what we, we start with what we call a project tree. And it, it involves discovery, create a buzz, start, get a part, get develop partnership and manage that partnership, right? So those are the, the, the four steps, the four elements of establishing your brand. The discovery, so it's a discovery development and create tools. That's all into the discovery. Um, create a buzz. That means have people talking about it, have people, you know, inquiring about it, um, all of that. Just awareness, create awareness. Then after you can do that, then you can find partnerships, whether it's on social media or or whether it's um, a restaurant or, you know, it depends on what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, and then managing that partnership. So let's dig into the different elements of it. If anybody have questions in the, in the interim, just let me know while I'm going. And uh, I will stop and explain anything. Natty from Chelsea, big, big up. All right. And just remember to keep sharing because this is going to be some important information I'm, I'm giving up. You know what I mean? As you said, we ain't keeping nothing to ourselves. So I'm going to dig right into this. <clears throat> the discovery. The discovery part of it. The discovery part of it, it means you figure out Find a need in the marketplace. So for us, a car ranch, we all started because of oatmeal products, right? Um, and that's why we got into it. We, based on research and feedback, we know that there is a void that can be filled with goat milk products in Jamaica. It was an emerging market. So we jumped right in, right? Plus, the established need for goat meat was already there, so we know that could be a solid base to build from. So you go in and thinking, okay, we, will, we have the base that we can build on, but our main objective is to establish Cabra ranch with goat and goat milk products that was the goal so once we establish that then launching products will become easier because the brand will be recognized as goat and goat goat milk products goat milk associated right so if if we say oh we're gonna launch a lotion or a soap brand if we have a solid base of people who know Cabra Ranch and know what Cabra Ranch is, a, is about, they'll most likely try the products, right? So that's find the need and try to fill that need. If you already have an established farm and say, okay, now I want to pivot into something else. Like, let's say you were a pig farm and like Mr. Maku who has this pig farm thing and he wants to, to um, go into goat. Now you have to start branding, start to get the word out that, yo, Maku Farm Limited does goat meat. And we'll go through the step of how you go about doing that. 
So you already have a base for something else, but you're going to start a new product under that umbrella and you need to get it out. You need to get the word out. All right. So first thing you got to do is do what they call a SWOT analysis. So you figure out your strength, strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats. SWOT. We, that's what we, we, in the rooms, we just call it a SWOT analysis. So you figure out what your strengths are. You know what I mean? Are you, are you, you know, are you good on the making the product side or are you good on the husbandry and, and the production of the animals or the milk, whatever it is? Are you better on that side? What is your weakness? Both ways, right? And what is the, where the opportunity lies? So does the opportunity lies in um, t creating the products or the opportunity lies in the production of the raw material to make the product? Or in Peter Makuk's case, his strength is in managing the farm and getting the best out of the farm, right? Now, what are your threats? Threats could be various things. It could, you know, could be bad management. It could be pretty larceny. It could be anything. But you got to figure it out, right? So that's what we call we call the SWOT analysis. Um, let's, let's keep checking and see if there's any questions. You guys got to pay attention and take notes of these because this is really deep. This is in-depth, detailed stuff. All right? Now, after you do your SWOT analysis, you find com potential competitors. Who's doing it? How are they doing it? Are they doing it on a grand scale? Are they doing it on a small scale? Compare what they're doing to what you want to do and where your brands match up, right? Um, where are they positioned in the marketplace? You know what I mean? They could be high-end product. They could be in the middle. They could be entry level. You don't know. And, and what I mean by that, I have to break this stuff down. Like Apple products are premium products, right? Apple and Samsung are like premium products in the phone industry. Then you have the others, like Samsung will make premium all the way to entry level phone products. You have other phones that are like, I see blue and all these other low level entry level, entry level pro products like phones, right? So, when we say figure out where your competitors is in the marketplace, that's what we're talking about. If are they established brands or are they premium, you know, or, okay, let's talk about goat meat. Like you may have the man them that give you choice cuts and service the restaurants and boutique hotels and them things or supermarkets. And then you love the guys who service the, the cook shops. You know, the regular restaurants who just cook a curry goat and them on the service. Those guys are service, you know, the guys who keep party and them things. So, you know, party and, and, um, and regular consumers, like the community consumers, those are like entry level. You know, those people, I re those at that level, I regard as entry level. You know, in the medium is when you really have a consistent um, clientele that you have to service. And on the high end, we're talking about big scale production or elite productions. You know what I mean? Where premium means they, they're going to ask you for special cuts. They're going to want to make sure the meat is not older than eight months or nine months older. You know, they're gonna want you to do specific things to get it to them or have it prepared a certain way. Those, that's premium service, premium um, clientele. 
So you got to assess your competitors and see where they are in the marketplace. Um, next, get somebody to help you to develop or understand what your story is. Like, what is your brand story? What is, what is it about? You know, what is your goals? What is your value? What are your values? What are, what is important to you? And put that story on paper and figure out what is the key messaging that you want to send out to the public. And that's what, really that's a mission statement or a vision statement. You know what I mean? Point out what your long-term goal is you know, how you want to be um, functioning in your community or the sector or the country for uh, on a whole. Yeah, you got to figure that out. Once you figure that out, then you can go on to creating a marketing plan. Remember, you know, this is still under discovery. This is all under discovery, you, you, you're creating all these tools. Create a marketing plan, touching on the product that you're gonna sell, the people you're selling to, where, basically like, you know, are you selling your products in Kingston, Uptown side at a uh, 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 Kingston, or are you selling to downtown people to the man and will keep dance and keep parties or are you servicing boutique hotels on the on the on the north coast and or restaurants on the north coast like figure out you know where are you selling you know what i mean the people you're selling to um and then positioning your messaging behind how you position yourself you know like if you want to sell to elite uh, clientele, then you got to, the messaging has to say that anything they want, anywhere they want it, they, you'll get it to them. Anywhere they are, you'll bring it to them. You know, you can guarantee that, you can almost guarantee that the meat's going to be soft and tender because you, you, you always process meat that's, less than a year old or if you're doing soap you can you know special packaging how do they want it you know what i mean a, a basket and a fancy basket and all them things it's just different levels you know if you're selling soap and you can you were selling it into a pharmacy there's a different level of servicing that pharmacy than bringing a, a, a exclusive basket to somebody's office you know so yeah, positioning the key messages in how in what your your brand's about, the story and, and what you want the consumer to think about when they see your brand or think about your product. Right? And who speaks on behalf of the brand? What is the brand's voice? You know what I mean? Which means who's behind it? Who's who, who who's the face of it and that person has to be able to speak to the messages the messaging they have to have the ability to explain what the the, the brand is about what the products are do are, are about if you understand what i'm saying so i'm, I'm always going to relate this to relate this to farming thing so and i'm going to talk about the people um, that i know i'm going to use examples of the, my friends and colleagues right so let's say mackie that does breeding stock right if he's gonna be the guy who tells the story he's gonna be the face of the officer operation he has to have a grasp of how everything happens, which he does, because of him, a theme thing, and understand the short term goals, long term goals, and in between, and speak confidently on how 
he sees the product, his, his brand being positioned. You know what I mean? And the ability to give some insight on behind the scenes, like show people how he go about doing what he does. What, why should people trust his brand? Why should people trust out? If he says, this is a full blood animal from XYZ line, they will trust him. And one way of doing that is showing people the behind the scenes from birth to maturity. So people can follow if it's even a couple of kids from breeding season, from a kidding season, all the way to, to maturity. You know what I'm saying? That's how you uh, establish trust in your in, in, in your clientele and have people trust what you're doing and build your brand. Then what is the budget to do all of this? And where is that money coming from? Right? You have to figure that out. So remember where I said your weakness and your strength and all that stuff. If you know that you're not good at marketing, you're not good at doing budgets and them things, find somebody who will help you do it at a reasonable cost. Or if you know that, oh, I'm good enough to do up some budget, but I don't know nothing about social media or marketing and them things, find somebody that can help you do it. Or binge watch these um, YouTube videos on how to do it. Start following people that teaches you how to do it. Because YouTube University and, and Google University, you can learn every, anything you want. But you have to put the time in. You know, the people that I follow, we follow, you know, they'll tell you all the time that anything new you want to learn you can learn it from YouTube and, and Google, but you got to put in at least 50 hours. 50 hours of solid, 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 solid research and, and commitment to it. You know, and nowadays you can do a whole marketing and thing from your phone, social media, because basically marketing now is all social media for the most part. You know, you just have to understand the dynamics and the algorithms and or just copy somebody you see who is doing stuff and being successful, just copy them. And in the, and when I mean copy them, I mean figure out, okay, what are they doing? How many times they're posting? What are they posting? How do they post it? What does it look like they're posting? And just flip what they're doing into your style. That's all. You know, because remember, all other marketing plans that people draw for you, somebody else's ideas for the most part. So you just take their ideas from that person, that person figure it out and post it and keep your messaging, um, keep your messaging direct and simple, you know. Um, so then, yeah, so marketing, you'll get help, budget. If you don't know how to do a budget or what goes into a budget, you can still research that and figure it out if you don't have the funds, but pay somebody to do it. Where the money is coming from, um, you have to figure that out how you want to fund that. If you're starting a new product, I'm telling you the steps you need. Starting to or a new product or, or trying to figure out how to brand your farm, then you can start with the low hanging fruits. As I said, some of these things may not cost you anything because they will may cost you time, but of course it's your time. So you can figure out how to invest in yourself um, and learn how to do it over time. You know, learn how there's lots of budget templates online. And as I said, marketing, social media marketing and everything, you can figure that out online. Now, the second one is create a buzz. How do you create a buzz? Now that you figure out, okay, this is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to go about it. I've learned how to do the budget. I, can, I think I can make this work. As I said, I'm going to pivot to develop on creating a buzz as on the marketing thing. As I said before, figure out how to use social media acquire social media 
handles. That means Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And remember, you know, these companies start paying people now for content. If you're consistent, they'll start paying you for to, to post content. So go and get your handles. You know what I mean? Car Carbia Ranch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. We don't use Twitter. But um, we make sure we go out and get them. And I actually just got, I go chat on Instagram. And you know, that's already on Facebook. So YouTube is coming for that. So I'm just building on these assets, these brands. Remember, brands. I go chat. I discovered now is a brand. Since I get so many calls and messages about it, you know, I figured it's a brand that I can build on. And we talked about that a few weeks ago. So you go out and get them. Go secure those social media handles. Create a website or a splash page where you can have people come and see what the far, what your operation is about. You know, um, if you don't know how to do that, there's free things on uh, on the internet that you can use, or you can utilize Facebook in the interim. If you don't have anything, if you don't want to jump that deep into into a, a website at this time, but you can use Facebook. Um, so, and then, as I said, YouTube. Make sure you have a YouTube channel. Remember, this is all branding and creating an awareness on Buzz. Make sure you have a YouTube channel, right? And with once you get all these socials, these are assets that you can use to, to, to market and brand your, your, your operation. Make sure they're consistent with each other. Like, you know, guys know Cabo Ranch is the same way Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So make sure they're consistent if you have the opportunity to. If, 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 it's, if the exact thing is taken, try to find something similar. If, if it's not available on Instagram, but it's available on Facebook or vice versa, YouTube, whatever, try to get it as close as possible. So that way it's consistent across the board. Um, so now sit down and figure out, okay, what are the goals? Like, who would you like to work with when this brand, when this product is ready or when your brand is of certain recognition? So if you're going to develop, you know, if you're going to have soap on the market, where do you want to sell the soap. You want to sell it in Progressive, you want to sell it in uh, Fontana, or do you want it in hotels? You know, create a list of the different, what we call partners, you know? Don't look at these people like, yo, the most sell me thing. No, they're partners with you. You know what I mean? They are partners in, the, in, in your, 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 your whole plan. All right, so make that list and keep it visual so it reminds you. And then start creating marketing tools, assets that you can use, content that you can use to start that buzz, video content, you know, reels, um, postings on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, you know, if you're into writing, create a blog, you know, um, messaging people, all that stuff, you know, make sure you create a nice logo that you can utilize across the board, um, keep it consistent so people can always have a visual of what you represent. Um, remember, Facebook, Inst 
Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, all of those platforms. There's millions and hundreds of millions of people using them. Once you figure out how to, um, to use them, you can definitely make an impact. Facebook, when you can run Facebook ads and target just the people that are in a 10 mile radius of where you live. Or you can run a Facebook ad and just run it and just only the people that lives in Kingston sees it. That's so deep those uh, algorithms go and the ability to focus and target people. You know, on a sidetrack, that's how them that's how they hijack the, the, the election in, in, in US and other places. They use YouTube targeting people because everything you do on YouTube, you know you Facebook, everything you do on Facebook, they the algorithm pick up on it. And that's why if you view something and like it, you find that you start seeing more and more of that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's how they target you. So you can start using that to your advantage. You know, always think about social media as a marketing tool. It's a business tool. And for social media, as I said, use it as a business tool. So every time you post, trying to figure out, you know what I mean? Think about your product. Are you educating people about the product? Are you educated? Are you giving people an insight on what you do, how you do? Are you giving them a behind the scene look of your operation? You getting them to understand everything about your brand. You know what I mean? You're creating brand awareness, developing a relationship with them. So it's 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 always a good idea to show people what you do, how you do, and why you do it. You know, don't be scared to show people how your operation work. Don't show scared to show people your failures. You'll be surprised how many people show you empathy and give you a word of, of uh, advice or, you know, build your spirit up to keep moving if you share it with them and if you're bringing value to them on a daily basis. Develop a timeline on when you want to la launch a product or when you want to, you know, be able to sell. Like if you're selling meat and you say, yo, you know what, August season, the independent season, I want to do X, Y, X amount of um, meat on the market or whatever, plan accordingly. You know, put it on a calendar. You know, map it out from map it out from like you know for us we how many animals we're breeding, how many kids we're expecting, when they should be when they should hit the market, all of that. Everything's planned out. You know, and once the once the goods are for us, I'll explain. I'll tell you what we do. As I show you guys that video with Samson. And Rico in the back with those with those uh, mothers. I am actually already marketing the kids that are supposed to come from that group because I'm letting people know that big strong Samson and Rico is back there working. So if you like Samson's offspring, this is an opportunity for you to time it, save some money. Give us a call. Say, yo, I'm those mothers that Samson with. I need X, Y, Z. Can I get a kid from a female or a male from that group? Because you, we can give you the timeline when those kids are gonna be ready. We can tell you exactly when we expect those mothers to have kids. Those mothers definitely should have kid July, August. So that means. Those kids will be hit, ready for the market to hit the market before the year is up. You know, October, November, they can be on the market. 
as you know, if we're selling for small farmers that are starting their own thing, um, females that people want to, you know, add to their, their, their herd. So plan it out. Plan it all out so you can hit those targets. You know, figure out what your style is. What, you know, if if you know that your operation is not, not it's not like ours where, you know, we're agritourism type thing, so we have a unique setup, but figure out how do you show people, put your best foot forward, you know? If you have a nice animal that you want to show people like, yo, this kid is sweet, find the cleanest spot in your operation to take the pictures. Take, find a nice little corner, clean it up, put the kid in, in that little corner, take the pictures or the video and show the kid. You do not want people looking beyond the, uh, the focus of the picture, which is the kid or the goat. You don't want people looking beyond it and say, oh, what is that in the back? Is that an old piece of rusty zinc? Or like, no. And I'm talking to people them now that is serious about this. As I said, if you this is for the people them who seriously trying to build a brand. Serious. If you're gonna take pictures of an animal, make sure it's you're putting your best foot forward. Take the pictures, go through them. Make sure they, they're to your liking. Make sure there's nothing in the pictures you don't want people to, something else you want people to focus on. Make sure it's not there. Like, just make sure the focus is what you want it to be. You know, all these apps on, on the phones now, you can take out stuff out of the background. You can make the picture pop. You can change. You can just tap one time and, and the computer, the phone will, the app will make adjustments to the picture for it to look better. Keep those things in mind. You know what I mean? Aesthetic visuals, like you want it to look good. You know what I mean? And then what are your physical tools that you use to create buzz? In today's world, unless you have people coming to the farm, basically everything is going to be virtual right now. Right, but if you got established, there's physical things like merch that you can use, you know, hats, t shirts, all that stuff you can use to create awareness and create a buzz for your brand. You know, I mean, Jamaicans love wear those shirts with the thing on the chest, yeah, you can make some of those, give them to your friends or your staff. Or every time you touch your body, you wear it. Yeah. All right. So after all of that, if, um, if there's any question, if there's anything about creating a buzz, you want me to go over, repeat, Dig into say now because I'm gonna move on to um, another part section, which is like um, like paying for spending money to create awareness. So if there's any yes, um, let me just. See, Howard says, Sandy brought a like, sheep to me. She's one of the, one of my first, uh, like, small ruminants operation that I follow. Before we even started this, I've been watching her videos. I love what she does. I love how she runs her operation. And I love the transparency of her operation. So, um, okay, so there's no other questions, so I will move on to the different tools, digital tools or otherwise that you can spend money on to create buzz. 
social media, as I talked about, you can buy ads. You can buy ads, Google ads. You can buy Facebook ads. You can buy Instagram ads. And you can buy YouTube ads. And people will be thinking, oh, they don't have money for that. But if you dig into it, If you dig into it, you realize the spend. If you create a budget, if you have a budget to spend on marketing and building this brand, you can spend money on Facebook ads and have great returns from it by creating awareness for your brand or your product. Because Facebook has the ability to create the target that you want. You know what I mean? You could create a target of somebody who's interested in goat, goat milk, goat milk, goat uh, milk soap. Um, they're between 25 and 50. They live in uptown Kingston or whatever. You can create a whole target that only those people get see those ads people that with disposable income that sees those ads and they will be inclined to click and find out what you're about and possibly buy. So don't shy away from it because it can be very helpful. And it's not, it's, it, it's you have to analyze. Let's say you run the ad for a month and you say each time somebody click it's gonna be five cents or, okay, let's say, I'm talking about US dollars here. It's like three cents or five cents a click. And you can set how much you wanna spend for the day. You can say, oh, I'm not gonna spend more than $5 for the day. But my total budget for the month is whatever. You know, two hundred dollar, hundred dollar, seventy five dollar, whatever it is, but I don't want to spend more than five dollars for the day. But you can set the target of who sees the ad, and you want to target people that you think will be more inclined to like your product or like your brand. Secondly. Utilize videos. The short reel videos now are popular on all platforms. TikTok kick it off. Now YouTube has shorts and Instagram has reels. Instagram and Facebook has reels because Instagram and Facebook basically the same company. And they're very popular and you can create reels be creative, create reels on your phones and using the trending style of, of, of uh, thing, the trending song, the trending um, filter, whatever it is, that will get people to watch it because, oh, this is what's popping. Like you see all those songs that people are dancing to and all that stuff. You just need to use the song in one of your reels showcasing your operation or your product. And there's a good chance more people would see it with that song in it because the algorithm is going to start promoting that song. The more people watch that song, the more they show it. And there's a better chance of you being in that group. All right. And now and that's, that's, that shouldn't be hard to do if you're serious about this. Um, next thing is Assess how do you want to roll out your, your brand? Like, do you want it to be a national thing? Just like local Jamaica thing, or you want people in the diaspora to know about you, or do you, you don't care, you want to be global? Those ad spends will dictate how you spend your, your ad, money, ad money, right? You could just say, yo, I just want people in Jamaica to, to see these ads. 
or you can say I don't care. I want people in the the Jamaicans in you in you in the U.S., Canada, the U.K. I want or I just want all the Caribbean because like in the Mackie speak case, Mackie would want maybe want to target the whole Caribbean because that he wants to establish his brand so then he can eventually start shipping animals to Trinidad to be able, you know, for us when we have our, our products ready, yes, we may want to shoot target all people who love goats and love Jamaica and the Jamaican brand. So whether you're in America, US, in America, Canada, England, Trinidad, to, and wherever you are, if you like that stuff, we want to sell you stuff, you know? So you got to think about that. Let me know if I'm going too fast. I don't know if, if people are there. I don't see nothing. I don't see no comments. So let me stop and see if people are actually paying attention or I'm talking to myself. Give me a thumbs up if you're still there. All right, Natty says listening. Yeah, just um, don't let me keep rambling on. If you have questions or you don't understand something, um, just uh, let me know and I'll uh, circle back on it because this is very important stuff. This is serious, 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 highly researched data I'm giving you guys, information I'm giving you guys. You know what I mean? Some people may take this lightly, but this is in-depth, step-by-step way of rolling out a product or establishing a brand. Um, all right, so let me let me keep going. So as far as the publicity go, you got to start thinking about short term and long lead. Like, what are in the immediate? What do you want out of your immediate in the short term on your campaign of letting people be aware, you know? And then there's some long-term things you want to set them up for. Like those goats and those breeding, that breeding group in the back is a long-term thing. The ones in the lounge, in the, in the wiener's lounge is short-term. So I will show those short-term ones more often than I show the ones in the back, right? But I once, every once in a while, I remind people that, oh, these, these are back here getting, you know, breeding. And then once I confirm them, I will let people know, oh, remember that group in the back with Samson and uh, Rico? Those animals are now, I got, you know, 20, 30 of them pregnant and due date will be, you know, August, July, August, and I'm planting that seed in people's heads, say, hey, kids are coming from Samson. Kids are coming from Rico. You know, if your thing is about Nubians, created Nubians, here's an opportunity. If you want some nice graded females or a nice graded boar buck from looking like Samson, this is an opportunity. So that's a long lead um set up right there um if you're into as i said before if you're into writing blogs and then things you can document you know your your website could have blogs that you document what's going on tell people what's going on share your ideas with people you know and then another thing is to collaborate with other farmers that are doing similar things, even in their publicity um, campaign, you can collaborate with them. You see, we've done stuff with Mackie. We've done stuff with Khalil. Um, yeah, think about those things. And then you can also get people who are influential, that influence the sector or influence consumers, get them on board with you 
to talk about what you're doing. You know, like if you have the opportunity to get the Minister of Agriculture to pass through your farm, take quickly, get some pictures, videos with them, whatever, utilize that. You know, Dr. Young is popular in our sector. Get her to come through. And if she comes through, get a picture with her, showcase that she passed through and whatever. And if she given and that she's endorsing what you're doing. And if you're selling a product, physical product, soap, lotion, all that stuff, try to get somebody that have a bigger fan base or bigger uh, support in the, in, the, in, the, in the space than you have to come through and speak on it. You know, like all that stuff is, the, is a part of the publicity and creating a buzz around what you're doing. Um, and then as far as it comes to when you're ready to launch the product, all that lead up, as I said, remember the calendar and, the, and all that stuff, you set out your timeline. You go full on with merch, um, social media post that's exclusive to that launch or that product or the brand. You know, try to get all your friends and affiliates and colleagues to repost, support, all that stuff get them all in at that time. Like at Christmas time, you see how many people are posting stuff about, you know, them have this, them have that, and everybody say, oh, go check so-and-so for X, Y, Z. Like, that's what I'm talking about. It's the same concept. And it doesn't have to be just Christmas time or Easter time where everybody has sell bun and cheese or whatever it is, any time. Um, Dane wants to know how much do you, how much, um, how important does knowing your customer impact your brand? Yes, remember earlier on, I said research, right? Remember earlier on, I said, do your research and figure out what you're selling, who you're selling to. I remember I said, what are you selling? who you're selling to, and where. So it's important to know the people you're selling to and know how your, uh, your, your customer affect what you're doing. And your premier partners could be friends, family, TV, radio, social, all the social media platform, you can, as, as many contacts and links you can get into to get the word out. Those are your premier partners. Those are the people who are going to get the word out for you. You know, things you, should cons you can consider is, as I said, social media ads, Google ads, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is, utilize them. It's easy to figure out what the demo is, who the, the target market is. You can create, create it on Facebook and most of these platforms. Then tastemakers, people you know, will talk about this stuff. You know, like, for example, let me give you guys a, a scenario. Let's say we're launching a lotion line, it's lotion and soap and a thing. We're going to try to get people, influencers or tastemakers, whatever it is, to get a package. We send them a basket of things and let them talk about it or even just show on, on, on their social media that they get a package from Cabra Ranch or just stuff like that. Get the likes of Khalil as a big following. Make Khalil come talk about it. Even if you're into meat and, you know, say you all sell premium goat meat, make Khalil come and eat some curry goat, nice cooked curry goat and get him to talk about it. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Get people 
influencers, tastemakers on your side. Send them a package. You know what I mean? Call them, cool call them, or, or slide into them DM on social media. And you got to be persistent with it. You can't just one or two times if they're not, if they're not answer. No. I'll tell you guys how we got um, Floyd Green on the show when he was minister. It's because I would send them three or four messages a week until he responded. If he posts something that relates to our sector, I'll respond to it. And I will send him a DM same time. Whether I'm bigging him up or asking him some questions. Until he finally said, okay, well, come on. Um, marketing tools you can use when you're launching or getting the word out. It's like, you know, a contest. You know what I mean? Try to, if somebody will interview you. As I said before, videos about your business, about your, your product, about the operation, post them on social media. And don't forget, once you any relationship you build up along the way, maintain those relationships. If you remember that, you know what I mean, you met Dr. Young two years ago at um, Denby. Remember to call Dr. Young and maintain that relationship. Because in this thing, it's all about, in business, all about relationship and networking. Keep your relationship. You know, don't, don't let it go by. And people that you think was important at one point, you don't keep that connect and keep it moving. All right. So that's the, how you go about creating a buzz developing your the thing and creating a buzz around your brand and what you're doing. Now, once you get that out the way and you're rolling and you're moving products and or you're seeing, you know, progress, now you want to establish your partners in in the biz in the customer base. So as I mentioned before, your partners could be somebody who is willing to partner with you to sell the product or to promote the product or the brand itself, these are your partners. That's what we regard as partners. You know what I mean? You, 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 it, could be, it could be the likes of Progressive, could be Fantana, it could be, you know, Whoever it is, say, oh, I like this brand. I like that, you know, they got a solid following and we can stock the, the product or we can have them do some stuff for us. If you were like the likes of Maki, who's selling breeding stock and everybody like how we look, him go them look, he can have a partnership with High Pro or Nutramix because people trust that whatever he says about using those products, they believe it and they will buy that product. That's partnership. Um, so you got to activate all of that. Try to use that to your advantage. If you're selling meat and your partner you, you, the people you're selling to is the like of hotels or restaurants and stuff. Make sure that that partnership works it to your advantage or a mutual benefit. You know, not just selling people meat and then forget about it. You should have the ability to utilize that relationship in promo, in you know, social media posts. Let's say there's a popular restaurant that you service or you go to. You can partner with them on a promotion. You know what I'm saying? They can post on their social media that 
the curry goat it looks so good and people are thought about it actually comes from you know Macook farms or you know not uh, Chelsea based farm or you get what I'm saying yeah Um, so I'm sorry, I was just checking the comments to make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, so you got to maintain these relationship. And then the last one in that whole section of partnering, you need to create what we call a hype sheet or a deck to send to potential partners. So you have these other relationships and these partners are ready that you're working with. You create a one sheet or we call a hype sheet. You know what I mean? Like progressive love it, Fantana love it. You know what I mean? This is a hotel, love it, whatever. And this is what um, the, this man said on so this influencer say on social media. This is what Yendi think about the lotion. You know what I mean? This is what um, this top chef on social media say about our goat meat or whatever it is. I create a hype sheet that you can send to potential new partners. So if you want, let's say you want your, your, your lotion or whatever to be in the new hotel that's opening in New Kingston and Yendi Phillips say, yo, this lotion, wicked are the best lotion never used by my hands or whatever. You want that in your hype sheet. You want that on your in your deck. See what I'm saying? So you can send that to potential new partners. Um, always search for new partnership. Never rest on the fact that you're in Progressive or you're in Fontana or you're selling to, you know, sandals or to or some nice restaurant in the in the um the on the north coast. Always look for new partnership. You know, always look for the ability to scale. You know, I know it's tough if you're supplying meat and them things because scaling means you have to, you know, step up production, etc. But if you're in value added products, then it may be easier for you to scale your production. You know what I mean? It may be easier for you to make more lotion, make more soap, you know, um, than if you are selling meat or otherwise, right? But you should always look. You can't put your egg in a one basket. You should always be looking for other partners. Either, you know, whether, whether you're selling them product or they're utilizing the fact that you have a trusted brand to help them, you know, remember the beer. So this is to have people trust the brand. People believe that what you're putting out there is good stuff, quality stuff, you know, that's the key. So it may not just be buying products. It could just the fact that they want to associate with the brand. And, so once you start doing all that, in order to maintain and scale, you got to start gathering statistics on, and analytics from all of this. You have to keep back to record keeping, right? You have to keep a, uh, uh, keep a check on how this is working. Is the money you're spending on developing the brand, are you getting the return? You know, are you selling more products since you start buying Facebook ads? You know, is, uh, is, is your brand more recognizable since you start spending on Google ads? You know, is people, are you getting more calls or more um, inquiries since you start posting most more on social media? You got to have the ability to, um, to, to check those things. Um, Howard says, being consistent with the production and sharing of information is also quite important. Keep it in front. Yes, exactly. 
Um, that's basically what you need to do. Consistent. Be consistent. Give them consistent information. Or be consistent with your information. Um, also, when you when there's a new potential new partner, try to figure out what you want from that partnership. Do you want more awareness? Do you want the ability to sell more products or widen your customer base? Or are you looking for um, what you call endorsement? Or you know, for somebody to say, yo, this is a great product or a great brand so you can scale. You get what I'm saying? So you have to figure out before you jump into any partnership, what do I want out of it? You know, what we call, what are the different deliverables from the partnership? You know, is it, sometimes it's the partnership may comes in the form of money somebody pay you to be associated with them so then you can in turn invest more into the business and scale the business you know you have to understand what is your ask and what is the partnership deliverable what are they delivering to you you know and it could just be is it a brand exposure thing you know are you partnering with fontana because fontana will be talking about how good your lotion or your soap is and in turn it great give you a bigger exposure or is it um they're gonna give you money just to be associated with you so you can put that money in to your business and create more product you know or it could be a combination of both you know it could be money and awareness Exposure. Always, always vet your potential partners so it doesn't conflict with your values and what your company is about, what your brand is about. Always vet them. You don't want to establish a brand that people trust or whatever and think of you a certain way, whatever, but then all of a sudden you're doing, you're partnering and and somebody's talking about you, that they're aligned with you and their complete different values or op complete opposite when it comes to, to um, social responsibilities or, or um, animal care or whatever it is, you know what I mean? You, don't, you wanna make sure that you're aligned with them, you, that they're, you, your morals and your, your values align. And also let them tell you what their objectives are by trying to uh, uh, be partner with you. What are they looking? What is? What are? What, what are they looking from you? What do they want from you? You know, so that way you, you don't end up down the road. They're like, oh, you we're expecting you to do X Y Z, and you're like, I didn't know I'm supposed to do these things or talk about these things or post on social media about these things. You know, both ways you gotta let people get what they want from you and get what you want from them. Also, the term of this partnership, is it one year, is it two year, is it five year, is it per project? Like, is it just for this one launch or this lotion or this type of soup or get the terms of the partnership clear? you know, and then you dig into the details of what they're going to do and what you need to do. Once you get into partnership, what are the key messages? What is the messaging from the partner? What is the messaging from you? Have a clear message. What are you, what is the message for this? arrangement um, it's very important that the messaging when you're into partnership is clear because you don't want to be saying something over here 
and then the partners on the other side seeing something conflicting. You understand what I'm saying? So make sure the messaging on the partnership is clear. And both people are sending out both the same message, promoting things the same way. Once you can cover all those bases, I suggest that the more the more partnership you have, whether it's outlets to, to stock your product or association or endorsements or whatever it is, social awareness, whatever it is, whatever you whatever whatever the goal is, the more of those you have that aligns with your values, the greater chance you have of your brand being successful. Just think about this. If you can, if you have lotion, soap, or whatever it is, and you can actually get that to be in progressive, on the shelf in progressive, have a front display in Fontana, have the ability for Fontana to be talking about you on their social platforms. That's a big plus. That's a major plus in Jamaica. And then you get an influencer or a tastemaker or whatever to post and say, hey, look, I've tried this soup on amazing just it does wonders. The likes of uh, Hussein Bolt or uh, Osafa Powell or Yendi or the Mitchells or whatever it is. Get one of those people to say, yo, I like this product. Some, some of them you can pay them and get it, you know. Um, it's all a, all a part of the branding and establishing the, your, 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 your brand. If you can do that, you're on the way. Now, once the and you understand how to get things done and manage it, all you got to do now is manage the partners that you have. Manage the relationship, the communication with them. You know, always let people, let them know what you're doing. If you have any doubts in what you're supposed to do, reach out and ask. So there's no mixed signal anywhere. Once you do all of this and you're getting traction, you just need to manage these partnerships. Whether it's your retail partner or your social media partner or whatever it is, just find a way to manage it so the relationship stays solid for the term of that agreement. And basically that's it. That's establishing your brand in a nutshell. So the project tree, as we call it, discover, develop and create tools Create a buzz. So discover, develop, and create tools. One, create a buzz, find partners, and manage the partners. And discover, I touched on, find a need in the marketplace. Or if you have assets, how does it um, help you to launch your, your product. Um, figure out your strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats, what we call the SWOT analysis. Find, figure out your competitors or comparable brands to what you're trying to do or what you want to do. Develop and understand the story behind your brand. Figure out the key messages, long-term and short-term. 
which is a mission statement or vision statement. Create a marketing plan. You know, what are you selling? Who are you selling to? Where are you selling to? Positioning the messaging behind you, your cell. The brand voice, who's the face and the voice of your brand. Who or what. Budget, figure out how much you want to spend to do this. Where the money is coming from. Creating a buzz, develop and create a buzz. We talk about the social media platforms. We talk about... Um, utilizing influencers or tastemakers, understanding how to, uh, to buy ads on social media, creating the tools to use on social media. Your phone can do a lot of it for the, all the different apps, website, develop a logo, make sure you get the handle, social media handles for your, your brand right across our platform, make sure they're similar um create a calendar that you're gonna roll this out on you know as i mentioned like i know selling we selling these uh wieners to people i try to give people you know from birth to or even breeding to to weaning get them see a timeline that they see the, the whole process and that's all planned out um visuals that you're gonna utilize if you're taking pictures to post on social media take pictures that are you know aesthetic visuals like people will gravitate to them and stay focused on what you the 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 the, the subject you want them to stay focused on um physical tools could be t um merch t-shirts and all that stuff that you can utilize you know, whether it's a hat, T-shirt, um, all that, all that kind of. You guys know what I'm talking about. Planning out the, your, uh, your your campaign in the form of use what tools you're gonna use. You know, as I mentioned, Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads. There's in, that's Instagram ads, or you can. Um, have partners help you. As I mentioned before, the likes of um, retail stores or or feed companies or whatever. Publicity, you know, figure that out, whether using social media, using influencers or, you know, radio, TV, whatever is available to your friends. Um, all those all, all of that utilize them to your to your advantage um create a hype sheet or a deck for potential partners that you can send to them stating who likes the products people who think highly of the product or the brand and make sure and you can utilize that to to secure a new partnership um activate current uh, contacts, keep relationships going, um, and always be looking for new partnership. Yeah, I think that's it. So if anybody have any questions, um, feel free to shoot them and I can uh, answer them to the best of my ability. Any questions, anyone? I guess not. So Howard is saying, so his company, his business uses a social media rep who has to post a set number of items per week. Is in the Philippines. <laughs> uh, the references for partnering and accessing resources are endless. Exactly. That is so true. Um, it's, um, it goes, once you 
develop a trusted brand, you're going to find that there's going to be a lot of people who want to associate with you. You know, a lot of people are going to want to be associated with your brand. And that's why the vetting and all that is so important to make sure that their values and what they're about align with what you're about. I know this information to some may seem um, boring or it's not as, um, as fun to be digging into this stuff, but this is the stuff that is important, equally as important as knowing what medication to give you a goat or, you know, any other thing that happens on the farm, because if you don't know how to build your business, scale your business or, or find partners or market your business, it's not going to go anywhere. You know, um, Dana, is there a need to develop your unique selling position? Of course, there's always the ability to, to position yourself. You want to position yourself to have an advantage over your competitor. How to, and for me, to me, the best way to do that is to, have a strong relationship with your customer base that people have trust in what you offer that people believe that they know exactly what they're getting if they buy from you or if they do business with you um I'll tell you guys this, that you, if you get people to believe or trust that the information you're giving them on a daily basis, the information you're sharing with them, the behind the scenes that you're sharing with them, you'll find that they'll always turn to you or they'll always be sending people to you because they know they can trust what you're telling them. You know what I'm saying? They trust that what you're selling them is good. When people buy animals from us, nine out of 10 times, they can see that animal from the first day that kid was born till it gets picked up off the farm. Because they're, we're showing them, you know, we sell people animals and then I'll be posting videos of that animal's a month, two months after the animal leaves the farm. And, you know, I have one good friend who's calling me, telling me he's going to charge me royalties for using the animal in my videos because now the animal is on his farm and the animal is his. So I shouldn't be using it. You know, of course, it's a joke, but at least you know, you can tell, you see it from birth or even before. You know, there's people who follow Daphne the Dapple Goat and they always ask about Daphne. So that's that, that's about building a relationship with your with your base. Letting people understand what you do and they'll trust what you do. Um so yeah, that's it for me. Um, hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully um, people have a better understanding of how they can go about building their brand. Um, this is what we do. Um, if you follow Cabra Ranch from the beginning, you can see a lot of those steps in place. You know, um, there's no magic to it, it's consistency. Um, so I'll call it a night and, uh, we'll see you guys next week. And once again, if you listen carefully, you can hear Cricket some Pini Wally. We're back on the farm doing this right from the farm because now we got somewhat reliable internet. So 
see you guys next week. And uh, thanks for joining us and share the information with your friends and everyone that you think will benefit from it. See you all next week. Thanks again, guys. <laughs>